The world is in crisis. It's not because people are dying. It's because people are living. In the next 10 years, there will be more than 1 billion people aged 65 years and older. This raises a number of concerns with how we're actually going to care for these people, considering we'll have less younger people to care for this population. Ageing, unfortunately, isn't just about wrinkles and grey hair and glasses. It's also about comorbidities. So as we age, we're more likely to have physical functioning problems. Dementia, for example, cognitive impairment. And this raises more issues about how we're going to care for this population. Japan, one of the most oldest countries in the world, they have 50,000 people aged 100 years of age or older. They've invested heavily in the use of technologies, in particular social robotics and also physical, uh, other sorts of robotics. This has raised a number of questions in terms of ethical dilemmas. Should we be using robotics for people who are ageing? Is there concerns in terms of, is it taking away the human element of care? Today what I'm going to show you is that actually robots help people. They enhance the human activity. They en enable people to care better in a more efficient way. So let me take you let me take you to a scenario. This is a lady, imagine it's you, you're living in the Gold Coast and you're aged 85 years of age. You're frail, you've got um, diminishing eyesight. You've recently been diagnosed with early stage dementia. Your nearest family member lives in Singapore. So the likelihood of someone being able to care for you is no one can come in quickly from the street and help you out. You're very concerned about your diagnosis, but you're more concerned with the fact that you may leave, have to leave your home and go into an institution. You call your daughter, you speak to your GP, you can have some assistance in terms of community care. Someone coming in one or two hours a week, maybe to help with your housework, and also some hygiene. But all up, you, you're alone, 23 hours of the day. How are you going to manage? <coughs> Your daughter has recently been to a robotics conference and she's discovered this amazing robot called a telepresence robot. This robot will give you reminders, tell you when to take your medication you need for your blood pressure. You can also play cards with the robot. You can connect with your daughter and your daughter can connect with you to make sure that you're, not, you're safe and sound in your home. Your doctor can connect with you, check your blood pressure, your weight, your hydration, make sure that you're being monitored very well. Also, there's an internet service, so you can call up, get your groceries delivered, etc. Life is looking pretty good. But your daughter doesn't want to stop there. She gives you a robotic floor cleaner, a robotic window cleaner, and it's doing pretty good. It can clean the house pretty well in between social services coming in. But the best investment she makes is an autonomous car. This is like a Google car. It sits outside your home. You get in it and it tells you or you tell it you want to go to the GP or to the community service, wherever you want to go to. This enables you to do things you've never been able to do before. It also takes away the concern that you no longer have a licence because you have dementia. But better still, she gives you one of these. Let me turn Henry on. You know that she knows that you have missed your dog that's recently died. She gives you one of these. This is a robotic seal. You can look into its eyes every night as you take it to bed and cuddle it. But also, you realise that you don't have to get up in the night to take it to the toilet. You don't have to feed it, you can give it a little bit of electricity and it will keep going. So life is pretty good for you at the moment. Now, I have created this scenario, but it's not unusual. There are many people here at the Gold Coast who have this sort of concerns. They may not have the opportunity to be involved with a robot, but these robots I've talked about are all available. So it's not like it's fantasy. These are things we can engage with. In the past, and I think this is why there's been so much ethical concerns about robots, we used to think about robots in terms of doing work for us 
What could they do for, for us in terms of um, lifting, etc.? We now see robots in terms of partnerships. Our work is work in things like this, this little robot, so it's covered in tactile sensors. It's made in Japan. People often say to me, you know, well, could I have a dog rather than this? A dog might bite someone or they might fall over it. This doesn't take a lot um, to connect with it. These sorts of robots are developed in terms of looking at how we connect with other human beings. You don't need training, easily pick it up. And it has the eyes, contact, etc. helps people to engage with it very quickly. So these sorts of robots and the robots I've talked about are designed to fill that care gap that we currently have and are going to continue to have. But one of the concerns is, are we ready? Are we ready to actually, as a society, take on these sorts of robotics? I propose that we need to be thinking more about them, more development and getting people involved in the early development of robots. This is why we use social robots, so people with dementia become, lose their um, communication skills very early. They're often very isolated because of that, and they also become quite agitated. What we've found is using these sorts of robots help to encourage people to communicate, and also they reduce uh, social isolation. The current work that we've done in terms of our pilot work has shown how, how valuable these are at helping people to feel good about life again, improving quality of life, etc. The telepresence robots that we've also been using, which I've explained to you, I guess, in my case scenario, is about connection, allowing people, no matter where they are in the world, to connect together with family members, with health professionals, with neighbours, whoever. It's a very cost-effective communication system. So, I love robots. Yes, I do. Sometimes people say this, the robot lady. I sometimes think it's better than being called the Alzheimer's lady. But <laughs> I guess one of the most obvious um, ability of robots is to help us with our caring. 10 billion people, uh, 1 billion people in 10 years, we need to do something and something now about that. Robots are a long way from being mainstream, so they're not in everybody's house. But I guess if I ask people here, you've probably got at least one robot in your house. So please think about it, think about how you can engage with these and also in terms of connecting with a smart home. Thank you.